Is there something about David I should know? Yeah, he's king. I really love meet and greets. It was fun to kind of be in character. People aren't always expecting it. I've been in their shoes before to where you want to do anything you can just to remember it as much as possible. And it's just signing everything, like signing shirts, people are just ripping pieces of paper, like whatever they can get. My eyes are burning because of smiling so much. Hello everyone! The meet and greets were impactful for me because I knew that I was really the only female character that had a significant role. Oftentimes we don't do enough to honor our young girl's relationship with Christ. So that meant a lot to me to be able to talk and empower them that they were an important part of the story. There was a bunch of little girls that came up to us and we told everyone that they were princesses and they hugged us and said they loved our costumes and said that we did good. So many people will come up around me and I'm just like, I'm woman one, I have three lines. And they're like, can we have your autograph? It's just been eye-opening. Everything matters, the big and the small. I like that fit. Is that Gucci? Yeah. Who is Gucci? Gucci. Can we take the picture with you guys? Take a what? We're supposed to be in character and be of the period of time. And so people are like, oh, can we take a picture? A picture? What is that? What is that? And people are like, oh, it's like a painting. It's like a really fast painting. A painting? Oh. You Are you an artist? They are artists! They're, They're all artists. artists! Wow! And we would look at the camera and be like, Whose eye did you steal to put on that rock? I think we're supposed to smile for the magic mirror. It appears as though Shema does not know how to take a picture. He seems very confused. Yeah. The painting is in the rock? He thought it was a rock. Still confused by this tape. Yes, it's rather distracting, actually. Is this a, a caterpillar? <laughs> Jonathan. The biggest thing was really staying in character because some kids were relentless. They were like, hey, I think your beard is fake. I am a I can see it. You question my brother's facial hair? <laughs> this took years for me to grow. Hey! I have kids already playing Jesse. I was like, oh, would you like to be one of my kids too? Join the family. I've decided that I have too many boys. I, I want to adopt some daughters. I think she'd be a fine addition to our family. What are we now, 20? Seeing the way that we connected with the kids and interacting with them is just the best experience you could ever have. I was a little nervous. Goliath is mean. Like, how am I going to pull that off? A lot of people kept asking me, like, how tall really are you? And I'm like, almost 10 feet tall. Actually, really tall in your life. <laughs> almost 10 feet tall. You're so big. The kids actually asked me to sing, You're Gonna Die Soon. You're gonna die soon. <laughs> You're gonna die soon. I will kill you, I will kill you, I will kill you. It was just an awesome experience. I'm never gonna forget. One of my favorite facts that I like to share on my tours is the fact that each costume was fit specifically for that person, all the way down to what color looked best on them. Costuming was amazing. I'm just, you know, kind of a, an extra character, but I have like five, six costumes, and I was really impressed with what they had done with them. For the most part, I'm a background character, but I put on my marketplace outfit, and I saw the detail on the sleeves, and the way they sewed up the, the apron, and the vibrancy of the colors. I don't think I expected like Hollywood level, Broadway level detail. The very first one I tried on was David's mother's outfit. And Vanya, our amazing costume designer, she's been, you know, working on sketching and planning these for, you know, years. She showed me the little sketch in her design book and I thought, oh, that's so pretty. And then she pulled out the dress and I was like, oh, she's magical. It just fit perfectly and it's this beautiful like rust color with little apron and looks very momish. I've never had costumes that are comfortable, but those are things that I would literally wear on a day-to-day -day basis. They are that comfortable and that well-made. I really love my costume. It has really beautiful beading on the collar line, so well thought out and conceptualized and designed to every little detail. I just think it's amazing. 
when you put it on, you're like, this is the character. This is what the character would wear. And so it kind of brings you into that world and allows you to experience it a little bit more firsthand than it would just running lines on a stage. My costume is very regal. It's very pompous. Like there's a lot of jewels and the crown is also huge. It's just really flashy. They put in so much work for even costumes that I'm only gonna wear one or two times during the entire play. You can see it when you walk in there because everything is organized, everything's labeled with your name on it. I'm just looking at them and I realize like how much time and effort was put into designing and, and crafting these works of art. Vanya had a whole wonderful crew of ladies that helped her alter the costumes or add finishing touches to some of the costumes, some of the hats. If you look at all the hats that Vanya makes, you will see how that just sets off every costume. She loves making the hats. Solid work. Ah! In Act 3, Scene 2, I throw a spear at David. So I underwent some spear training. I would go out to a field every day, and I would just practice throwing it through a piece of cardboard. I make a couple of mistakes in a lifetime of service! That was a moment when Saul is really starting to go over the deep end and starts to accuse David. I was a little nervous to try it here because I was going to be damaging the set with every hit. You ungrateful worm! Boom, baby! Beautiful. Pull it out, Saul. I just had to make sure I was thinking during that shot so that I could whirl around and throw the spear with accuracy so I could look where I was throwing it and not hit David or another part of the set. Thank you all for your hard work, and this is two weeks in the making. Good work. Saul throws a lot of spears. The time I tried to throw a spear at my son Jonathan at the banquet was a lot of fun. You're going to grab it, try to move forward. He'll move you backwards, then you'll try to move forwards again. Does that make okay. sense? Now, when you do this, don't worry about using muscle on this. This is more like a dance. Again, there's a little bit of danger in the scene because I could accidentally throw it at somebody. I could swing it around and hit somebody with it. We just largely practiced getting the dance of wrestling that spear out of my hand done in such a way that it wouldn't hurt anybody. Kill you myself. Boom. Uh, no. There you go. Good. Kill you myself. Two, one. I took archery lessons getting in the role for Jonathan because he's a master bowman. And my mentality was, if I'm gonna shoot an arrow on stage, I better know how to shoot a bow. <laughs> the lines really helped a lot for me, the placing of the bow. Whenever I would say, you'll be fine, get out there. That's when I needed to place it on the bow and get it ready. And by the time I said, that's good, keep going, I need to have it already shelved and to be ready just to go. And phew! Seeing Buddy really come to the table prepared, the research he has done into the character of Jonathan, into what it would be like to be a prince of Israel, the work that he's done in not only just memorizing the lines, but memorizing the scenes that he's in and making sure that he understands exactly why he's saying the things that he is. It's just brought a professionalism to the character of Jonathan that I was really, really hoping for. <laughs> I play quite a few different characters. My main speaking role is called The Lazy Servant, and that will debut tonight. It's a super fun role. I get to basically complain about why he's making me go and chase this arrow down. This didn't seem very well planned out. Whoa. It's a cool plan, man. I can come up with cool plans, too. It's 10.51, and we wanted to make sure that we got a front row seat for Oshkosh tonight, and so we all decided to bring our chairs so we can set them up so that we can have a front row seat for tonight's service. All right, guys, I think we're good. Like David, Dave killed the lions.
This is night three of five nights. Lord, I praise you and we thank you for all you've done so far and all you will do in the next few days. We thank you for giving us energy where we have none, for being our strength where we are weak. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got 30 seconds. Two, one. Whoa, now wait just a second. Now this seems vaguely familiar, except last time it was King Saul leading the armies, and now it's David. Act three is the warrior David. There's the full getup, sword and everything. And so when I go to the costume tent, it was the first time that the beard was put on, or the first time that I grew my beard. They said today is when I become a man. They put the beard on and everything, tack it down, and then it's not cut to what they want. They had three people in front of me, one with scissors, like they'd make a little cut and they'd all stand back and look at it. They'd make a little cut and they'd all look at it again like, I don't know. So once they finally got that cut, then we were already low on time to do makeup. So we rush back to do makeup, we do makeup, and then I hear the narrator start talking. And I'm like, David in the army, Jason, I Jason. saw them. Where's Jason? Are you sure? Where's Jason? Yeah. Where's Jason? So they're, they're rushing to throw all that on, and then it comes to a point, and I'm like, okay, I need to go. Can I go? I'm going. Woo! My heart is literally pounding right now. Exactly! Somebody remembers. Song is a hero and a champion of the world. Yeah, more of that. Anyone can kill a giant when God is on your side. Say tens of thousands. What? See if you can work that into your song somehow. It sounds so catchy. I had to throw the spear at David, and I was a little worried because it was somewhat dangerous. That's a metal tip. You could do some damage with it. And David had to stand right in the way and duck out of the way just as the spear came through, so it was just critical timing. I'm on your side. No one's on my side, you ungrateful worm. <laughs> and I hit it at the right time in the right place and hit it dead on. You can't steal my kingdom if you're dead. What's going on? Father, stop. I'm sorry, my king. I knew it was a bad idea to leave them. That's enough. Are you OK, my king? Abner. Are you still my loyal servant? The character I'm playing is Abner. He saw us general, and he's in this weird position because he wants to be loyal to his king, but also it's like, okay, when is Saul going too far? Send two of your best men to wait outside David's home. The next time he shows his face, kill him. They're still down there, David. He means it this time. He wants you dead. Michael. I am playing the role of Michael. She is Saul's daughter, and she's David's wife. You think you're just gonna go about your day tomorrow? When the assassins catch you off guard, you think God will just turn their blades into sheep's wool? If that's his will, yes. So as Saul's daughter, she's kind of caught in this dilemma of, well, my dad is the king, but he wants to kill my husband, who's supposed to be the king. She has a decision to make. When your father finds out you're helping me? I can handle my father. Just go. I'm getting changed for my next scene. Camden here, one of our makeup ladies, is helping me get dressed. As these costumes are hard to get on and off. 
So I come over here and I grab my arm guards and my shim guards. Uh, the arm guards are really hard to put on, so Camden's gonna help me with the arm guards. Straps on both sides. These ones, same concept. I don't have a weapon for this next scene as it's a dance number. But so the last thing that I need is my helmet. Mark my name. Get the helmet. Ready to go on scene. Things were going so well for David, but now he's on the run. David is not your enemy. He's- oh, Send a unit of soldiers. Bring them both back to me. But my king- Send soldiers or I will have you killed too. Armed soldiers descended on the innocent school of the prophets. They could see them coming a long way off and David was beside himself. But Samuel, Samuel knew just what to do. Why don't you want to praise the Lord your God? Uh, it's not that we don't want to. We just, it's not what we were sent here to- Wonderful! Then let's praise the Lord. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. His nature is perfect. His strength has no limit. When singing to God, we love every minute. Thanks be to God. His love is infinite. Infinite? What's infinite? So trust in Him, He will provide the things we all will need. Let the Lord be glorified, with Him we will succeed. No need to run, no need to hide, his word is guaranteed When the Lord is by your side There's no better place to be The deed is done Without a hitch The whole unit is there right now Chilling with David and Samuel What? Kill David and Samuel, not chill Send more troops Do not confuse my orders Exterminate David I always knew it was funny when we were practicing it, but maybe you just get used to going through those things over and over again. But the audience just kind of went crazy when my soldiers would go down and they would one by one get pulled into this dance, praising the Lord. He controls the land and the sea. We fed off the crowd's energy that entire song. It was just this beautiful moment where all of our rehearsal came to fruition. The earth is the Lord's. Act three, I have to, and it, this is a quote, Samuel dances strangely or awkwardly like an old man. Well, it, that's exactly right. We love every minute. It's just fun. I'm enjoying all of it. Thanks be to God, his love is infinite. Just as directed, the second unit joined forces with the first unit to imitate David and Samuel. I said exterminate. Send more troops! When you're doing it over and over and over, there's parts that you're not thinking are as comical as the audience thinks. Every time that beat would come back up, the audience just loved it. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. His nature is perfect, his strength has no limit. When singing to God, we love every minute. Thanks be to God, his love is infinite. The best part of all was at the very end when Saul came in. I'm here to do one thing, Samuel. The will of the Lord. Saul goes down and gets pulled into the same dance, and the crowd just went crazy over it. So that's really fun. No. Wait for the spin, wait for the spin. Purify, no, no prisoner he can <laughs> The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. His nature is perfect, his strength has no limit. When singing to God, we love every minute. Thanks be to God, his love is infinite. I appreciated that moment of levity before it starts getting dark.
go hide out behind the rock of Izel. On the third day of the feast, I'll come out into that field like I'm going to do target practice with my bow, and I'll grab whoever I can find to go out there and retrieve my arrows. Now, if I shoot my arrow short of that guy, then you'll know it's safe to come back. But if I shoot my arrow beyond him over his head, then you'll know things didn't go so well. Got it? Yeah, okay. Why don't you just come and tell me? Oh, that's a great idea. What? You get to make a cool plan, but I don't? It's a cool plan. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll do the arrow thing. So now the boys have a plan, but I don't see how it's going to make things any better. Just seems like we're getting in deeper and deeper. This is banquet and yes. then the arrow, so I have time, right? Yes. I'm just the storyteller. Hey, you're doing good, man. You're doing great. You're doing great. Sure enough, the new moon feast got underway. And sure enough, David was a no-show. That's enough! That's enough! Ugh. David asked if he could go back home for his family's feast this time. And I didn't think you'd mind, so I told him he could. You backstabbing, conniving wretch of a son! You think I don't know where your loyalty lies? I know you've chosen the son of Jesse over your own father, you shameful, thankless brat! <clears throat> King Saul, the people! In the banquet scene, Buddy just did this great job pretending to be innocent. And that just made me, as King Saul, really angry with him. Maybe I'll spare your mother the shame and kill you myself! No! Get out! You're not welcome here anymore! Go! I'm gonna go shoot an arrow. I want you to go get it. Head out about a hundred yards. You want me to go out before you shoot? Yeah. Why not? I'm gonna put it over your head. No! I I'm not comfortable with that! Dude, I'm Jonathan. I'm an expert with this thing. Go on. The bow was a really big concern because after I let it go, it's gone. Like, we really don't have really control. I'm the one who's controlling it. Security held off a position where no one gets past this point, no one comes from that way. So they had that location set off for me. I just had to shoot straight. I pulled it back. It went straight. And immediately I was like, thank you, God. Did you get it? Yeah, eventually. Nice target. It went beyond you, right? No, I've got it. It was by far the most powerful moment for me because that was a really big concern, and it went flawlessly. <laughs> you didn't even hit anything. W would you just get out of here? Go on, you're burning daylight. This didn't seem very well planned out. Whoa. It's a cool plan, man. I can come up with cool plans, too. Your dad still wants me dead. Oh, yeah. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. He even tried to kill me, too. The relationship with Jonathan and David is one of my favorites in the scripture. Their brotherhood, their loyalty to one another. Um, to see the chemistry that our Jonathan and David have with one another, I mean, I never could have imagined that we were going to have two people like that who had never met each other before come together and be able to bring that relationship to life. I'll be your trusted servant, your best friend. This is my solemn oath. My family and your family forever. Thank you, Jonathan. I feel the same way. Be safe, brother. I, know they I was feeding off the energy of the audience, clapping for Jonathan's oath with David. And as soon as I exit off of E4, as soon as I'm like away from any lights, I go, yes! Thank you, God, so much. into a bush by the baptism pool, which was in plan, so thank goodness. Woo! Eric, it went so good. <laughs> it went beyond me. I'm just sitting there, E4, waiting for my scene. Buddy comes through my scene, and this is literally what he does. He, <laughs> he comes and he's like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh. It was an incredible night. On to act four now.
When will you do this painting? I, I need to see this painting. A meet and greet. Yes, a meet. we're going to Jerusalem. Is that an animal on top of your He kills an animal. It's a bird. Some do not recognize when they are in the presence of royalty. And it is my duty to protect the royal family at any cost. I appreciate you so much, Jordan. Of course. It goes on forever. Good thing you're decisive. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shannon, and you're watching Oscar's Live. The bread is like straight garlic bread. It's very good. It's so good. I know what he is. For a bread. Baby, we out here 